John 13, we'll begin reading verse 21. This is commonly referred to as the Last Supper of our Lord. It's not the Last Supper. There's a marriage supper coming. Uh, just thought I'd throw that out. In verse 21, the Bible says, When Jesus had thus said, He was troubled in spirit, and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We show our thankful for amazing grace. And Lord, we're thankful that sometimes we have to be reminded that our thinking isn't always right that sometimes the greatest blessings come through burdens and trials. Lord, we are reminded that you do all things well, that, Lord, if you allow anything to come into our life, it comes into our life for the praise, honor, and glory of our darling Savior. God, I pray that regardless of whether it's a crown of gold or a crown of thorns, we'd wear it well to your praise. Now, Father, I pray you'd bless now reading of the Word of God. Help us now to ever draw closer to God that you might draw closer to us. We do pray for those that are sick. We certainly miss folks when they're sick and not able to be with us. I pray you'd touch them. We pray for those that are traveling. You'd give them traveling mercies. Lord, we are so grateful that, Lord, our kids had a wonderful week at camp and most grateful that Miss Maddie trusted in Christ now is saved on her way to heaven. Now, Lord, we pray in a crowd this size, if there's somebody here unsaved, that today would be the day of their salvation. Father, we pray for your children. Lord, there's no telling the needs that folks have in their lives, but we know that all can be met in Christ. And so, Father, I pray you'd meet every need of every heart. Sin revival. God, do a great work in our midst today. And Father, we'll bless you for it. Use this unworthy vessel now. We'll not fail to praise you for your goodness, for it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen and amen. Well, here we find several things. Uh, first of all, we find that Jesus is troubled. Look again in verse 22. When Jesus, or verse 21, and when Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit. A lot of times we get in our minds that Jesus was, uh, and God manifest in the flesh that he was a superman, that he had no problems. Yet if you read the word of God, you'll find that Jesus wept. Uh, you'll find that Jesus uh, felt pain. Uh, you'll find that Jesus went hungry. Uh, you'll find that Jesus had no place to pillow his head. He was homeless. Uh, and here we find he's troubled uh, in spirit. Uh, my dear friends, when the Bible says he was touched with the feeling of our infirmities, uh, yet he was without sin, uh, friend, he knows what you're going through. Uh, when you're hurting, he knows what you're feeling. Uh, friend, he's uh, faced it, uh, and he's a God that we can look to and depend on. Uh, we find Jesus was troubled. Here we also find Jesus testifies. Look again in verse 21 said he was troubled in spirit and testified. What did he testify of? He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Now we find out why he's troubled. <coughs> My friends, he's not troubled that he's going to the cross. That's why he came into the world. 
He's troubled that for the last three plus years, he's hauled around these 12 fellas. He's done many marvelous miracles before them. Uh, he has preached uh, before them. Uh, he has done everything that it would take necessary for them to believe on him as the Lord, uh, and yet one of them hasn't. Can I say, when Jesus looks in this world, he's not troubled about what's going on in Ukraine. He's not troubled about what's going on in the Middle East. He's not even troubled about the gas prices. He's troubled that uh, for 2,000 years the gospel's been preached, uh, churches have been planted, uh, and yet there are folks who have not believed on him, maybe even in this service today. And he testifies that not only has one not believed on him, but one's about to betray him. Hmm? I wonder sitting in the house of God this morning if there's somebody here that by this time next week you'll betray the Lord. Judas sold him for 30 pieces of silver. I've found Baptists will sell him out a whole lot cheaper than that. All it takes is something not to fit into their schedule. Well, Lord, you'll have to understand. He don't understand. He went to Calvary for you. Hmm? We see his trouble. He testifies. Notice we find that Jesus' disciples are in turmoil. Look at verse 22. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. They're in, they're in turmoil. The other count in the Gospels, they begin to ask, Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? We find they're in turmoil. They have just been hit with some news. One of you is a snake. And they're in turmoil. They're, they're wondering, is it me? And then they're looking around saying, hmm, I wonder which one of these boogers it is. Hmm? There's some turmoil going on. Can I say it is not news that there's always turmoil going on? Hmm? Jesus has all the answers, but a lot of times we're looking around trying to figure it out. Hmm? We see his disciples are in turmoil. I want you to... Notice we find that uh, we find a disciple of Jesus who is true. Look at verse 23. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Matter of fact, if you read all four accounts of the gospel, you'll find that never does John ask, Is it I? The only question John asks comes down a couple verses later when he looks at the Lord and says, Lord, who is it? Because John knows he's not going to betray the Lord. Mm -mm. We see there's one true. And then we find here Jesus is traitor. In verse 26. Jesus says, it's the same one I'm going to give uh, after I've dipped in the sop. And he gives it to him and it was Judas Iscariot, the traitor. Mm -hmm. Isn't it amazing? Used to the world hated traitors if you was called a Judas that was a slam on you if you was called Benedict Arnold that's a slam on you but now we got folks who are traitors sell out to uh, the Supreme Court and leak information there's traitors all the time nothing even happens to them huh? mm -hmm. we find Jesus is traitor I'm interested in verse 23 this morning the Bible says, Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. This is the first of five times you'll find in the book of John where John is referred to as the disciple whom Jesus loved. Anytime you study numerology in the Bible, the number five always represents grace. It's no mistake, Brother James, you're saying about grace. As I'm about ready to deliver something about grace. Huh? That's how God works. He puts things together. We find five times John is referred to as the disciple whom Jesus loves. What grace? But can I take it a step farther? Because God just never does the bare minimum. Do you know what the name John actually means? One who has received mercy or grace. Huh? It's no mistake the one who loved 
Jesus and known as the disciple whom Jesus loved uh, is also one who appreciated the good grace of God. Uh, hey, can I say, uh, you might have been the most vilest of sinners, uh, but when Jesus came by uh, and he saved your never dying soul uh, and extended you the grace of God, uh, hey, no wonder folks uh, know you as one who loves Jesus. Uh, now, can I say that the Bible says he's the disciple whom Jesus loved. Now, Brother Brian, I read the Bible. It tells me God's no respecter of persons. That means Jesus loved them all. Even Judas, who's about to betray him. Jesus loved them all. Well, how come John's only referred to as the one whom Jesus loved? That's not contingent on Jesus. It's contingent on John. So I want to preach with God's help on the rewarding relationship God has for every believer. The rewarding relationship God has for every believer. Jesus wanted all of them to be known as the disciple whom Jesus loved. But only John was worthy of the title, the disciple whom Jesus loved. John was rewarded because of the relationship he had with Jesus. And can I say, Jesus wants each and every one of us to have that same relationship with him today. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, have you ever seen some and you thought, boy, God just loves them more. Uh, 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 everything they touch turns to gold. Uh, God just blesses them and blesses them. It seems like they never have any problems. Uh, they never have any trials. Uh, no, they got problems. Uh, they got trials. Uh, but they've just entered a relationship with Jesus where the troubles uh, and the trials don't have them. Uh, Jesus does. Uh, hey, you you see all the benefits uh, of the rewarded relationship uh, they have uh, in Christ. Uh, I've got good news. It's available to you. But in order to be known as the, the, the believer that Jesus loves, you've got to do the same thing John did. So let's look at that a little bit this morning, can we? Boy, I want to have the best relationship with Jesus I can have. And if John's known as the one that he loved, I want, to, I want to have a relationship with him like John did. I don't want to have a relationship with him like Thomas. I don't want to be known as the doubter. I certainly don't want to be Judas, and thank God I'm not. I'm saved. Judas went to hell. Huh? But I don't want to be like some of them. You never heard anything about them anymore. Huh? I certainly don't want to be Peter. I'm, I identify with Peter a lot. I put my foot in my mouth a lot. I'm hot-headed a lot. Huh? I don't want to be that guy. I want to be John. Uh, so how can we have this rewarding relationship? God's got it for all of us. How can we have it? Well, first of all, you've got to understand, John forsook all to follow him. Mm. Can I say, we can just stop right there. That's a lot of our problems right there. Boom. Answer the problem. See, John was a very successful fisherman. John and his brother James, they were the sons of Zebedee. And can I say, Zebedee was one that God had a special portion for. God had blessed. Uh, and hey, they had a successful fishing business. When Jesus came by and said, follow me, John said, okay. He turned his back on it all. You find later, Peter goes back to fishing. You'll find John forsook it all to follow Jesus. Can I say, if you're going to have a special relationship with Jesus, you've got to forsake it all. Not some. Some of you have forsaken some things. There are some things you used to do when you was a sinner after you met the Savior. You don't do anymore. Uh, there are some things uh, uh, you've cut the cords on. Uh, they no longer have a part in your life. Uh, but there are still some things that pull you away from being the disciple Jesus wants you to be. Amen. Some of you are controlled by things that have no place in your life if you're going to be leaning on the Lord's bosom, if you're going to have that special relationship. 
So uh, while you get upset looking at some who are blessed, uh, uh, who everything they touch is, turns to gold, uh, who God just shines on, uh, and you sit there and complain why God blesses him, God blesses him, God blesses him, it might be they've just forsaken it all. Mm, you want some help this morning? Cut the ties. Mm. Listen, Paul said all things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. What that means, that means not all things are good for me. There are some things that you have in your life that are not wrong, but they're not good for you because they're hurting your relationship with the Master because they're taking time away from Him. You want His blessings? You've got to forsake it all. That means you've got to give Him it all. All your time, all your attention, everything is His. Hmm? When it is a great day in your life when you realize everything you have came from His hand. And it is a greater day when you realize just give it back to Him. Give it all to Him, friend. Uh, he'll still let you enjoy some of it, uh, but give it all to Him. You'll see how much and how dear of a relationship you can have with Him when He has it all. And I say, John forsook all to follow Him. Can I say, John had a special fellowship with Him. Here they are at supper. I don't know about you, but when I'm supper, I'm looking for a bib and a knife and a fork. What's John doing? He's leaning on the Savior's breast. Hmm. See, a lot of times we're interested in our belly. John was interested in his heartbeat. Hmm. Can I say to have that special relationship any time there's a pause, it's a good time to just lean your head over on his bosom. I promise you somewhere in that night, John ate. But John got more on the Lord's bosom than he ever got off the plate. And a lot of times we're interested about things around us that don't matter. Uh, and here's a good barometer. Uh, uh, ask yourself if what you're doing right now, a hundred years from now, is even going to matter. But I promise you, when you're leaning on his bosom a hundred years from now, you'll still be blessed for it. Mm. Uh, a lot of times we've got so much going on and so many things that we put so much attention to that a hundred years from now, it isn't going to matter. It isn't going to give a, a flip about anything. Amen. But every second you spend with Jesus matters. Mm. He had a special fellowship with the Lord. Can I say, John was part of the inner circle. Now again, Jesus loved them all the same. But there were some times Jesus only took Peter, James, and John with him. They're called the inner circle. They had a special relationship with the Lord. Can I say, the night that they, they come to betray him, Jesus went up to the, to the mountain to pray. Who did he take? Peter, James, and John. Hmm? Huh? Can I say, Peter, James, and John was on the Mount of Transfiguration. They got to see him in his glory before they saw him at Calvary. I'm telling you, friends, John had a special fellowship with the Lord. There are some people that God shows special insights and special things to because of their special fellowship together. Hmm? I've heard preachers say, well, I wish God would show me something like that. We'll spend more time with him. He's telling on yourself. Hmm? Uh, I had a preacher one time say, What book did you get that out of? The King James Bible? That's true. And some of you get that thing I sent out on Sunday morning. I've had preachers ask, What book did I get them out of? Hmm? And, then, and then there's a whole host of them preachers. They think that's what I'm preaching on. Everyone. I say, I can't preach on it. I send it to them. I don't know how many people in the church. I can't get up and preach on it. But J.D. Walker preaches every one of them. <laughs> and he's not the only one that preaches some of those things. But I have, I've had preachers say, where'd you get that? Well, the Lord gave it to me. From the, I'm just reading the Bible and God gave it to me. Uh, that preacher say, preacher, you need to put all that stuff in a book. Why? You're stealing it now. Why do I have to put it in a book? Uh, John had special fellowship with the Lord. John had forsook all. And I say this, 
John possessed a fondness like no other. Every one of them could have been loving on the Lord that night. Only one did. Hmm. Can I say there are some people that God just shines on because they just love on Jesus a whole lot. How much do you love on him? Bill Warnke's in heaven, but he used to tell me all the time, said, well, I told her I loved her the day we got married. That was good enough. That's what he said about poor Miss Eloise. Huh? He used to say he wouldn't take a million dollars for her, wouldn't give a nickel for another one just like her. That's what he used to say. <laughs> Boy, I think he really loved her, don't you? Boy, uh-huh. He wouldn't mind me telling that. He's in heaven. But can I say this? If you only tell the Lord you love him when you want something, I don't think you love him. But when your whole world's falling apart and all you can do is fall on him and tell him how much you love him, you might have something that's real. John possessed a fondness for Jesus like no other. That's why he's known as the disciple whom Jesus loved. Does not the Bible say, draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you? So John is loving on the Lord. You don't know you think the Lord's going to love back on him? Hmm? Hmm. Well, I want that kind of relationship, don't you? You can have it. We don't have it because we don't want it. Oh, we say we want it. We just mm, don't want it as much as we don't want it. We want it, but not that bad. When you want it more than you don't want it, you'll have it. Hmm? Here's the thing. If I had a bottle of snake oil up here and said, here, you can come and get it for five bucks, you'd want it. But if I say, well, what you have to do is you've got to cut ties and forsake everything, and you've got to spend time with Jesus, and you've got to pray and read his word and talk to him and love on him. Well, see, that takes time, and that takes effort, and that takes uh, you sacrificing something, and you just don't want it that bad. I want it, but not that bad. That's why you don't have it. When you want it that bad, you'll have it. You know why Bella loves Jesus as much as she does? Because she don't let anything else come between her and Jesus. She just loves Jesus. She just loves church. She just loves everything about church. Hmm? Hey, the only other thing she's really got in her life is the weather map. She can tell you what the weather's going to be every day. But she loves Jesus. Do you? Do I love him? Is there proof for that? There's proof John loved him. He's leaning on his bosom. Can I say this about John? He had an unquestionable faithfulness. John's the only one who showed up at the cross. Some, some saw it from afar off, but John was right there. Knowing that they could have arrested him and he'd he be next. He had an unquestionable faithfulness. You'll never find John where he's not faithful. Even in the garden when he fell asleep, he was still there. An unquestionable faithfulness. To have a special relationship with Jesus, your faithfulness cannot come into question. He only blesses and honors faithfulness. I use this analogy, it's crude, but it's still true. If I come home this week and tell Miss Annette I was pretty faithful this week, it ain't going to be good at the foster house. Hmm? She don't throw rolling pins and pots and pans and dishes. She gives you the silent treat. I'd rather she throw pots and pans and get it over with. You know what I'm saying? Let's burn the house down and go on down the road. No. You get the silent treatment. And she gave one person silent treatment for three months. She's good at it. <laughs> Uh, I'm a yell and get it over kind of guy. No, not her. No, silent, dead silent. Huh? Dead silent. 
What are you looking at? <laughs> huh? It is dead silent. You see, pretty faithful isn't faithful. See, but a lot of folks tell the Lord, well, I've been pretty faithful. Yeah. Well, then you're not faithful. Right. Hmm? You see, we have redefined everything in this day and age to where everything fits into a gray area. Not with God. It's still black or right, white. It's still right or wrong. It's either truth or false. No pretty faithful comes into the equation. You know what I just heard? You know, folks got the gender problem going on where they don't know what they are. Now at some schools are saying kids are identifying as dogs and cats and they have to put litter boxes in the bathrooms. Uh, and you're not allowed to tease them. Lord, help me. I'd be, oh, oh, oh. I'm communicating with them. And bless God, if they go to the cafeteria, they ought to make them eat dog food or cat food, is what I say. No nanners, no peanut butter, no cheese, no, no, you get a can of uh, uh, friskies right here, huh? Litter box. Does that mean the ones think they're dogs, they take them out and tie them up to a tree and let them do their business? That's the stupidest thing I ever heard of. Somebody ought to go to that superintendent of that school and sue him because his brains divorced him for non-support, I'm telling you. We pander to people. Well, I'm telling you, God doesn't pander to people. We'll either do it the way God said or we'll suffer. God had an un uh, John had an unquestionable faithfulness. And the reason a lot of us don't have the special rewarded relationship with Jesus that he desires for us is our faithfulness comes into question. Even Thomas wasn't there the first night he appeared to the disciples after resurrection. Hmm? You know why I hate missing church? I'm afraid something will break out when I'm gone. That's why when I had surgery, uh, uh, my cancer surgery on Monday, I was in church on Wednesday. I didn't want to miss. Mm. There are sometimes you're providentially hindered where you have to miss. God understands that. But he doesn't understand when you put everything before church. He just don't understand it. And that's why you don't have that rewarded relationship. Mm. Can I say this about John? He was given a very distinctive future. While at the cross, Jesus looked at his mother and said, Mother, behold thy son, and looked at John. He looked at John and said, Behold thy mother. From that moment on, John took care of the Lord's mother. What a privilege. See, Jesus was her firstborn son. I said firstborn. She did have other sons. Read Mark, Mark chapter 9, you'll find she had other sons and had some daughters. I don't know whatever happened to all them. Can I say, uh, there was one time Jesus, uh, his mother and his brethren come to see him, uh, and he's in the middle of preaching, and he looked at the crowd and said, this is my brethren right here. huh? I don't know if they ever believed on the Lord, Bro Brother Bob, the Bible doesn't tell us. I don't know if Joseph ever believed on him. I don't know. All I know is the firstborn son, it was his responsibility to care for his mother uh, 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 after the father had passed away, or in his case, the stepfather had passed away. And Jesus didn't leave her to the, one of the brothers. Uh, he looked at John and said, John, uh, you're the disciple whom I love. Uh, I want you to take care of my mother. Uh, I trust you with my mother. Uh, hey, he had a very uh, blessed and distinctive future. Uh, and John took care of Mary until her death. Uh, and I'm here to tell you, those uh, that are rewarded of the Lord, the Lord gives you special privileges in your future uh, that he can trust you with. Uh, I've known preachers and wonder why God didn't bless their ministries. He couldn't trust them with it. Mm. Mm, that's just the truth of it. Hey. Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it. He just didn't give a church to everybody. Mm. And there's some that take it by proxy. They steal the vote. And look at what kind of mess our country's in when the vote gets stolen. And the same thing happens in churches. You're welcome. It didn't cost anything. Mm. But 
he was given a distinctive future because of his special relationship. Can I help you with something? Those that have that special relationship with the Lord, why do you see Judgment Day? They're going to get special rewards. Mm -hmm. Boy, it got real quiet there. Well, we like hearing about streets of gold. We don't like hearing about the Judgment Seat of Christ. Right. And by the way, you go to the Judgment Seat before two things. Before you ever see the streets of gold, and before the tears are wiped from your eyes. Mm -hmm. Can I say this? John was granted insightful favor. It was John who gave us the book of Revelation. It was John who was caught up to the third heaven to see everything in the future before it ever came to pass. It was John that he said, written these down in, in, in the book. It was John who got to see the bride already. John who got to see New Jerusalem. God got, uh, John got special insight and favor because of his special relationship with the Lord. Can I say this? John suffered an easier fate than the other disciples. Only John died of natural causes. The others were martyred, other than Judas who hung himself. Can I say something? Even those that have a special relationship with the Lord die different than those that don't have that special relationship. Now listen. The relationship that Christ had with John, he desires for every believer. It's exemplified in John, but available to all of us. And can I say, though, it was available to all of them. They refused to embrace him like John did. And Judas rejected him altogether. Now this morning, the Lord wants a special, rewarding relationship with you. He wants you to be known as the, as the believer Jesus loves. He wants you to have special privileges and afforded, reserved for those that give Jesus their all. It's available. It's yours for the asking. The real question is, do you really want it? And do you want it bad enough to have it? Hmm? You see, you can look at any of these kids and ask them if they want ice cream. They say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then mow the lawn. We'll see how much they really want ice cream. Well, see, the truth is with the Lord. Here it is. It's going to cost you something, but it's well worth it. You just got to be willing to pay the cost. If you want it today, you can have that special relationship. Well, I want to be known as one Jesus loves. I don't want to limp into heaven. I want to go out in a blaze of glory. Are you listening? I want to go out loving the Lord with all my heart, all my body, all my soul. And that comes at a price. Are we willing to pay the price? Friends, the reward far outweighs the price you have to pay. I've used this analogy over the years. I'm going to tell it because the Lord just put it on my heart. But Phil, this is the analogy I told Brother Jeffrey in Mississippi the night before God gave me the towel message. There was a little girl and like little girls, she liked to play dress up. And her mama had got her a set of plastic pearls, and she loved those plastic pearls. She thought that made her feel like a big girl. Her daddy come home from work one night, and she hugged her daddy like she did every night. And the daddy was telling her how good it was to see her. And the daddy asked her, he said, Baby, why don't you give me those pearls? Well, like any child would do. She said, oh, no, Daddy. Oh, no, I love my pearls, not my pearls. You can, you can have my Barbie doll. You can have this. You can have that, but not my pearls. Every night, Brother Donald, he'd come home, and he asked that little girl for the pearls. Every night, she wouldn't do it. For two weeks, Miss Marcy. Finally, one night, he comes in, and the little girl comes out of her room. She looks all dejected and pouty like little girls can do. 
not naming any names, Brittany, <coughs> but <laughs> she came up to her daddy and she says, here, daddy, if you want the pearls that bad, you can have them. And she gave her daddy the plastic pearls. And immediately her daddy reached in, her po in his pocket and he pulled out a real set of pearls and put them around her neck. You see, he had them from the first day. But she had to be willing to give up the junk for the real thing. And can I say, the Lord has something wonderful for you. But you've got to be willing to give up the junk. And when you do, you'll be so satisfied with what he puts on you that you'll forget all about what you had to give up I wonder do you really want the rewarded relationship that God has for you because friend there's nothing like it once he's blessed you that way let's all stand brother Ray come get a song of invitation if you're here today and you're not saved why don't you come we'd love to take the Bible and show you how to be saved there's nothing like being saved but if you're saved, don't live beneath your privileges as a believer. Why don't you let God bless your life the way he really wants to. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the example of John in the scriptures. God, I pray you'd burn in our heart a desire to love you like John did. God, regardless of any of the rewarding or blessing that comes from you, God, what you've already done in our lives, we ought to desire and love you. And the Lord long to be in your presence every day of our lives. Now, Father, bless in this invitation. Speak to hearts. God, certainly for somebody lost, I pray you'd convict them and save them. But save folks, I pray you'd convict them to want to live as Christ would have them live. Well, thank you for it in Jesus' name. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.